Republican Party have uh, influence in, in state politics today? Well, less than it did, but um, it's interesting that Vermont uh, bucked the tide. I suppose it's not uh, unusual in a variety of ways, but while the nation saw a dramatic shift toward Republican uh, leadership this year, uh, Vermont stayed more or less the same in the legislature and went the other way in the executive branch. Um, while the nation in the Congress um, moved away from one party rule, Vermont moved toward it. Um, so it's a, a very different political environment here and, and one where the Democrats who now hold all the cards are going to have to perform. Um, some people believe that the President was secretly pleased to lose one House of Congress because the responsibility for making national policy is not solely that of his party. Uh, but in Vermont, one party will have uh, all the say and, and Republicans will be the loyal opposition and I hope will speak up clearly and, and uh, decisively when they feel the need to, but the numbers are what they are. Is that something you'll do, to speak up? I, no, I think uh, it's important to, <coughs> not to continue to cover over my successor. I appreciated uh, Governor Dean's restraint after he left office eight years ago. Um, he uh, made an occasional biennial obligatory appearance with the Democratic nominee who was running against me, but um, with very few exceptions, uh, he did not speak out on uh, matters of state policy. He, that I've spoken on matters of national policy. Um, so I, uh, I don't expect to uh, be carping from the sidelines. I, I'm moving on to another stage of life. What do you think that'll be like for the legislature and the <coughs> both being from the same party? Do you, as a Vermonter, expect they'll fl a, a flood of legislation that you might have vetoed, or do you think that a new di dynamic takes hold and it's not that? I don't know, Terry, uh, and I, I understand the you know, the basis of your question, and sometimes uh, um, uh, the independent branches of government will uh, will want to demonstrate their independence. Um, just because they're all the same party uh, doesn't mean they'll always be on the same page. Uh, legislative leaders may uh, work hard to not be seen as um, uh, as uh, deferring unreasonably to the uh, to the governor's proposals and wishes and, and go a different way. Sometimes when a party gets too large, it begins to uh, to uh, splinter, but uh, it's a very liberal Democratic Party that's in power in Vermont now, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see which dynamic ultimately plays out. Do members of your team, do you think, disperse and scatter <coughs> into other areas, or do you see some of them playing uh, more prominent <coughs> roles in politics in the future? Me and my staff and cabinet, uh, yeah. folks will be with me. <coughs> I think um, we'll see them um, um, find opportunities um, and, and embrace them. Some of them um, will be in different uh, private endeavors, and I certainly wish each and every one of them well. Uh, one of the downsides of making the decision I did was that it puts all of my loyal staff and cabinet at risk in terms of their own future, but they're all talented people and, and I'm optimistic that they'll find something to do that's uh, rewarding. I expect that some of them uh, may choose to stay involved politically in one way or another, um, uh, whether um, active in the Republican Party or supporting candidates in the future. Uh, perhaps some of them will run for office themselves, uh, I really don't know. But, I think it's important for me to uh, to move on and uh, recognize Phil Scott, highest elected Republican, as the new titular head of our party, and do everything we can to, to support him. How could you characterize the challenge that faces the new governor? <coughs> Is it worse than anything you faced, or you know, can you just sort of put it into perspective? Well. Um, Trying to exercise the restraint that I just uh, promised, uh, um, it might not have been quite as profound if um, we agreed to a budget last year that exercised more restraint. Um, if we hadn't uh, used as much federal money quite as uh, 
quickly as we did. Um, but um, it's still a significant challenge and would be under any circumstances. And uh, he and his team are going to have to wrestle with that. Uh, I think the biggest uh, uh, challenge would be making some tough choices. Maybe uh, elected official comes into office with support from various constituencies and, and uh, can't always satisfy them all when the numbers are presented in very stark terms <coughs> to you at the time of preparing a budget. So it's going to have to make some tough decisions and we'll see what they are. What is, what's the, the change that happens, I mean, that you experience from candidate to governor uh, and, and how does one you know, uh, adapt to that, that all of a sudden you're no longer running for something, you're actually running it? And I mean, we're going to see that with, with, with our new governor. Um, what was the experience like for you? What was the biggest change there? Um, I don't think it was as big a change for me as it is for some. There are many who've, uh, who've uh, suggested that the president found that governing is quite different from campaigning. Um, and perhaps my successor will find that as well. I uh, tried to be <coughs> measured in the campaign eight years ago. I laid out a document called the Plan for Prosperity that perhaps you'll recall that articulated um, you know, some 56 pages of priorities that I wanted to advance if elected. And that became the blueprint for my administration. So I said what I was going to do did it, and uh, there wasn't any need for uh, um, shuffling or, or reconfiguring my basic approach to what I plan to do in state government. So I didn't have the kind of uh, different experience that perhaps some other people have. What so is different then about the incoming governor? Well, we'll have to see, but we have a substantial budget shortfall that needs to be addressed and a lot of people who um, want to spend more. And so are, are you referring to the fact that some of them are the people who help them get elected? It's, it's been noted that uh, a lot more women have been appointed to top administration posts in the incoming uh, administration than had been in yours. Um, do you think that's an important worthwhile observation for people to make? And if so, what sort of conclusion should they draw from it? I'm not sure it's true, Peter. I, I've heard it, but uh, I hope that's the kind of investigative reporting that will be undertaken in the near term. Uh, there's one of six agency secretaries who's a, a woman. I've had uh, several over time, not currently. Um, I've had uh, um, more women in my immediate staff than um, uh, certainly than, uh, or at least no fewer than, than I see now. Uh, I uh, didn't have the opportunity to uh, Appoint someone to fill a state elected vacancy uh, as uh, the new governor has. But uh, I think, uh, in terms of overall appointments of department heads and deputies, uh, I think you'll find that a pretty good record. All right, we got to wrap it up. Well, thanks. But I just want once more for Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> well, thank you all. Thanks for the uh, gifts and um, drink the Kool-Aid. Come on. Just, uh, just lunch. <laughs>